In the meantime, I want to bring in Congresswoman Marsha Blackburn, a Republican Congresswoman from Tennessee, to talk about the fiscal cliff and what a day we've had already on that front. Congresswoman, good morning. Thanks for being with good us. Good morning. Yes, good to be with you. Thank you. Uh, let's back up just a little bit this morning uh, to what uh, your colleague from Tennessee, Bob Corker, said on our air, and that was that in response to the White House uh, offer overnight, still no likelihood of a deal. Why so negative? Well, I, I think you have to look at the fact that for about 19 months, we in the House have been sending things to the Senate and to the White House. I mean, take the budget. It's been over 1,300 days since the Senate did a budget, you know, and we've already passed tax extenders that would make certain that every person in America sees their tax rates stay where they are right now. We've passed bills to deal with sequestration. We've passed it to deal with reconciliation. All of that is in the Senate. I guess Harry Reid and the President are just dug in. They want this fiscal cliff to happen, and we keep working at it, trying to prevent it. Uh, the, so the White House moves from 250 in terms of people whose taxes will go up or not uh, to 400. Uh, the speaker's at a million, and then with this new Plan B, apparently stuck at a million. Uh, there had been some speculation that maybe the two could meet somewhere at 500. Why is that not happening? I, you know, go ask the White House. I think that's a good question to ask them why there is not movement. And many of us feel like you've got to have some spending cuts. Look at this $16 trillion debt that we have. You have to get the fiscal house in order. If you do not do something about entitlement reform, about the spending that is out of control, you're still going to see a downgrade when it comes to the ratings agencies. And when you have uh, even many of the Democrats now beginning to say you have to take a look at the spending and you have to take a look at entitlements. I think the White House would be well served to look at some of the things that we in the House have passed that are ready for action. The Senate could go to conference on any of these bills they wanted to go to conference on. They are not uh, doing it. I think that they are fine with people having their taxes go up. We in the House are not fine with those taxes going up. We want to make tax reductions permanent and spending temporary because the debt has to be brought under control. Right. Uh, talk to me about the thinking, the reasoning behind this plan B that the speaker just rolled out a short time ago. White House uh, Senator Reid say there are not the votes to pass it. We've seen some Republican Congress people say I'm not voting for it. I, I didn't come here to vote for anyone's taxes to go up. Is this actually intended to get past the House floor? Well, a couple of things. Number one, I commend the speaker for continuing to work on a plan B and for returning to regular order in the House, which is what we ought to be doing. We need to do what we're going to do. We need to send it to the Senate. They need to take their action. We need to go to conference, send it to the president. He can sign it or veto it. But we are separate branches of government. We're going to take our action. Now, let's see what ends up in the plan B. Uh, as we're talking about this, let's see what's going to come out of Ways and Means Committee, out of Budget Committee, and see where we're going to end up with this before we begin to yay or nay or up or down it. Uh, as I said, many of us in the House, our goal is to make certain that nobody's, nobody's taxes go up and that we get the spending and the entitlements under control and we begin to talk in terms of a growth agenda because if you're going to get the fiscal house in order, you've got to have some economic growth. And if you're looking at one and a half, two, two and a quarter percent economic sure. growth, it's not going to get you where you need to be. No, uh, at least not anytime soon. Finally, um, it's been reported that at least the main sticking points at this hour, and this could all change soon, uh, <laughs> continue to be the Medicare age, right? Number one. And number two, whether it's one or two year vacation from the debt limit. Does that sound accurate? to you? Uh, you know, you're hearing lots of different things. There are different options that are there for Medicare for making certain that the promises are kept to seniors and near seniors and that there are options for younger workers. I think that you're going to see that debate take place over the first three months of next year, quite frankly. I also think that when it comes to the debt ceiling, 
that is the jurisdiction of the House. Uh, we are the ones that need to be taking the actions. The president needs to be coming to us. We can allow or disallow. And quite frankly, I think a lot of people are at the point that they've watched this administration with these $1 trillion plus deficits every year. They're running a $4 billion deficit a day. If we keep this up, by the time we get to 2020, we're going to be in the shape Greece is in, with 152% of our GDP being locked into debt. I mean, we cannot sustain this. You have to begin to make some systematic, across the board, and detailed reductions in this spending. And it has to be on the discretionary and on the entitlement sure. or mandatory side. And you have to deal with the trust funds and treat them as trust funds, not as pass-throughs to the general fund. Congresswoman, thanks for your time. I know it's a very busy day down there. It is uh, we'll indeed. You Thank you. Congresswoman Blackburn. Uh,